I tend to do social media stuff and what's trending and stuff like that. Hey. Yes, and I'm here. Time to find Are out what's you? going on, okay. what everyone is saying on mm. social media about some of the issues we've been talking about today. So, okay, yeah. so let's go straight let's away then. get right into it. And I must say, most Ghanaians are frustrated. No one will argue with that. On the back of one of the worst ongoing power crises the country is facing. Or is it all just a fuss about nothing? Hey, do so. Some jobs are going down. They are sucking the people's. You know, good. This do something here. It's killing us. We'll have more on that and, of course, an update on the Doom Sop Must Stop Vigil. And with all the frustration going around, sometimes there's nowhere else to lay blame but at the very top. But when does criticism of government cross the line? Have we lost respect for the presidency? Do respect the presidency, maybe to some extent. Not that um, we don't respect the presidency, but it's as a result of the crisis that um, is happening. I, I have a lot of respect for the presidency, regardless of who is over there, who, which party is in power. And the Facebook rant continues. I'm referring to Togolese footballer Emmanuel Adebayo. He continues to air his woes on social media with a part two of the tales of his family. This time he gives us details about his brother Rotimi. Remember the one who he said stole 21 phones? Well, it's all coming up in the next half hour. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison and this is Joy News Interactive. <laughs> And you can get interactive with us. There's a look at our social media platforms. We're on facebook.com forward slash join news on TV. We're also on Twitter at join news on TV or at JN Interactive GH. Alternatively, you can send us an email. It's join news. I am at multitvworld.com. And you can also send your messages via WhatsApp. The number is 054-010-9009. The number again is 54 The Doom Saw Must Stop Vigil. It may end even before it begins. Well, that still remains to be seen. But if you do not know by now, a ban on drumming and dancing, which precedes the Homo, the Homo War Festival, beg your pardon, in Garland, begins today, May 11th, for the next month. And that may pull the plug on the vigil. During this time, there should be no noise making within the Ga traditional area. It is believed that it is the time to allow the gods some peace and quiet. So following a petition from the Ga traditional council to the police, a meeting was held this afternoon to discuss whether the vigil will come on. And my colleague, Afre Kwachi Nyama, Nyama monitored the meeting. He joins me here in studio. Welcome to Join News Interactive. Thank you, Efwa. So, Afre, will the Doom Summer Stop Vigil come on or not? Well, certainly that remains to be seen. It's not clear now because the police uh, could not reach a uh, conclusion mm -hmm. insofar as that meeting they organized today when they met, as you mentioned earlier, the leadership of the, the traditional no the leadership of the uh, the, the lawyers actually okay. of the celebrities okay. mr kofi bento and then nana Kwe, so it's it's not so clear now but of course the the lawyers remain uh, optimistic that they can reach a certain agreement with the police and tomorrow there's another meeting because today's meeting could not reach a conclusion they are meeting the petitioners themselves that's a Ga traditional okay. council to decide the way forward so the two parties the petitioner and the organizers will meet, plus the police uh, on the way forward. It's quite dicey now mm, because mm. if the police may want to consider other things about security and possible clashes and all that, that could all that will all be factored into the final decision of whether they will be willing to offer protection to the 
organizers, the celebrities mm. in this case, on Saturday's uh, demonstration. But then now there's also the argument that uh, the area that they want to actually hold the demonstration or the vigil is not within the Ga uh, traditional areas we were listening to on today's big story. So. And, and that's generated some fascinating controversy as well because now we know that the La Traditional Council are also saying that, of course, that side of the, uh, the, 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 the land belongs to them and not the Ghana Traditional Council. Yeah. We've heard from uh, their spokesperson, uh, Mr. Olenu, Davis Olenu, who say that clearly, uh, they, they, and they are insisting that the Ghana Traditional Council is wrong to say that that part forms, you know, it's, it's within the jurisdiction yeah. of, of, of the council. Yeah. And so it's, the police will have to sort all those issues out. Of course, they've also said that they are willing to meet uh, representatives from the La Traditional Council mm. as they look to resolve this entire matter. Okay. Thank you very much, Afre. Hopefully the issue would be made more clear tomorrow. At least you know, the ban on noise making does not stop you from using your generator. The story is on myjoyonline.com. The heading is um, ban on noise making doesn't affect generators, guard chiefs. And a spokesperson for the Guard Traditional Council, Nico May, says generators are excluded from the list of noise making activity banned as the area begins observance of the annual cultural custom now nico may explain that the noise made by generators is an uncontrollable outcome and therefore cannot be affected by the ban the generator has found significance because of the ongoing load shedding arrangement in ghana for three years, the generators have become a compelling alternative to power in many homes, offices, and industries in Accra, with the ban beginning May 11th and ending June 11th. There are suggestions that the noisy power alternative may incur the displeasure of the traditional authorities, but it is all not so. So that's the article on myjoyonline.com. Well, are you tired of hearing about the doomsaw crisis or you think people are just making a fuss about nothing. We've been asking you out on the streets. It's worse, it's bad, right. it's very bad because um, considering the kind of jobs that we do here, I've seen the barbering shops, the salons, the welders, they're not working. And even, even if you walk into an office for some job to be done for you, they go like, there's no light. So everybody's sitting idle, nobody's doing anything about it. So I think it's getting very, very, very bad. Accra is a capital, and most of the big companies are here in Accra. And Accra is playing a major role when it comes to the economy, because um, the jobs here are, how, how do I put it? Um, yeah, so if it's only based in Accra and Kumasi, it's still having an impact on the country. It's really the big. I think the big deal. Yeah, it's the big, like, the way they do so, some jobs are going down, they are sucking the people's. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. So the doom so is too bad. We are tired. We are tired of John Mahama. It's a big issue in the sense that I have a little boy, baby boy, one year, few months. And you know, in the night he will get up sleeping. The mother will have to also get up, you know, have to find this baby boy. We can't sleep, all my things in the fridge. At the moment, one big fridge is, st is standing there, it's spoiled, you see. So this is doing something there, it's killing us. I'm from Central Region. I, I spoke to my sister, he said it's not all that bad. Even in Kaswa, I understand it's not bad. But I don't know why I cry in Tema. Maybe it's because of the industries. Maybe the industries are consuming a lot of the uh, power. But we are using prepaid. I've bought prepaid, I've bought power, and I'm supposed to enjoy it. I can't. Your views from the streets, and we also posted the question on Facebook. We've been asking um, if, you know, we're just making a fuss 
about nothing, especially when it comes to the doom so crisis. Are we talking too much or we haven't talked enough? I'll have all your comments on Facebook and social media after this break. And you're welcome back to Join News Interactive with me, Ifwa Akwa Harrison. We've been talking about the hashtag Doomsop Must Stop Vigil, and we've also been asking you if there isn't a lot of noise being made because of doom so are we not giving uh, the president and government enough chance to fix the situation this is what you had to say on facebook moses Bire says i think everyone has heard about it without taking place so i think it's okay it should not come on again, and this is in reference to uh, the doom so must stop vigil probably being put on hold. But we will know uh, finally if the vigil will come on on Saturday tomorrow. Joseph Dinaru Amaglo says, why should religious beliefs stop others from worshipping their God? I really want to know if it is constitutional. Uh, so he's talking about the ban on drumming and dancing. Shaban Abdul Manaf says, hmm, are there no equally pertinent issues to be discussed? The doom saw has been overly stretched. So he thinks that people are talking about doom so too much. Tego Emmanuel says, no, I'm not tired. As long as it's not solved, the heat must be maintained. Tego, your comment is well noted print elam richie says this i know from day one that it would not see the light of day because it is not even going to add a kilowatt to the grid there is no sense in the vigil and mahamadu nantoma badim sugu says what the gun traditional council is demanding is it constitutional and are the people there having the same doom so problem or not, I wonder. And John Jerry Asian is asking us when they said they were putting it on hold. Well, if you've been following today's big story and Joy News Interactive, well, that is the situation right now. We won't know for sure whether the doom so must stop vigil will come on until tomorrow after the police and uh, lawyers for Yvonne Nelson meet with the Ga Traditional Council. And final comment coming from Mensa Konto. Stephen says, some people want us to always live in darkness for them to send armed robbers to come and steal our property at night. They don't want an end to this doom so because it benefits them and will keep them out of business when it ends. All their evil plans will be revealed. So those are some of your very interesting comments coming through on social media. Thank you for sending them through. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, if you think people are just making noise because of doom, so well, the state broadcaster has a different opinion. The Ghana Broadcasting Corporation is also feeling the effects of the doom so the company has had to reduce its transmission time and i have the story right here on myjoyonline.com and it tells us about how gbc has cut its transmission hours in response to the worsening power crisis in the country the station has suspended its 24-hour broadcast and now ends trans transmission at midnight and broadcasts resume at half past four in the morning and so that's the story coming through on myjoyonline.com you can go then read the full report about how gbc has cut its transmission due to the doom so crisis so as you can see the energy crisis is something that it's really affecting quite a number of companies including our own our very own multimedia group limited uh, this is how come we, in solidarity with all that 
have been affected by the doom so we brought you the doom so version of the news on independence day something that is getting a lot of traction again on instagram since actress yvonne nelson gave a throwback post to it it's on her instagram page and we have over four thousand likes on that and that's from actress yvonne nelson's instagram page and Sarko Dias Doomso hit there, uh, sending us to our next issue. Now, when the populace complains, they expect government to listen and offer solutions. But presidential staffer Sam George does not believe the refrain that public office holders that who are paid with taxpayers' money should be subjected to wanton criticism. He says it is causing a culture of disrespect that has moved up the ladder to the very doors of the presidency. So what do you think? Have Ghanaians lost respect for the presidency? As to some comments that people have made about the presidency in regards to what some of the public public appointees have said about it. I think that's what is making people think that there's no respect. Personally, I think that there's also some, some element of respect around the presidency. Yeah. Personally, I do respect him, but I think he's not just sitting down or his people are not just sitting down. They are trying their best to do whatever we want, especially now that there's this doom sort thing. But I know his, if he can do it, definitely would have done it a long time. So he's trying his best. We shouldn't just insult. And I, I know people do insult social media there are lots of insults there which is not fair definitely people are there like our fathers our big brothers and so we should respect them it's their work so they'll do their best for us they are not just sitting there i know they are trying for us I, I have a lot of respect for the president regardless of who is over there who, which party is in power somebody be, being the president of a whole country is not an easy task mm -hmm. it's not an exact so regardless of whatever the problems we are facing mm -hmm. we should still have that respect for the presidency but not that um, we don't respect the presidency but it's as a result of the crisis that um, is happening, which we are not, um, he's not being able to meet it up. Yeah, that's why it has brought his respect a little bit down. And because um, it's like our politics is like, we always give promises. We make the people feel like the presidency does everything. And in campaigning, we do make the people aware that they are also responsible to those things that they do. So that's as a result. I do respect the presidency, maybe to some extent, because I think um, what he says doesn't carry much weight like before. Unlike um, before, I mean, all these kind of promises is made in the past times. He has not been able to, how do I put it, fulfill them. So it's. I think it's making him lose that kind of respect we have for him for now. He's our president, first gentleman of the land. So naturally we have to give him the respect that is due him. But I'm disappointed in him. I'm disappointed in my mama. And let's take your Facebook comments on that issue as well. Do you think Ghanaians have lost respect for the presidency? We shared the story on our Facebook page. And let's see if I can just read a few of your comments. Yeah, still coming up. Let's see what you are saying on WhatsApp. And a lot of you are sending us comments on the Doomso issue. We, the people of Anloga and Anyako, are tired of this Doomso. That's from Elikem Courtesy. I think I have your comments now on uh, the presidency issue. Joseph Nakote says, does the president and his appointees respect the people who put them there? Uh, respect is end, and the beautiful thing is that it is reciprocal. 
Okay. Uh, so that's from Joseph Nakute. Katechie Kwame in Pieming says, because the president has not been truthful to Ghanaians and his communicators have been churning out lies. So I guess you, you're saying that is why you do not, or most Ghanaians do not respect the presidency. Sian Emmanuel says, why should Ghanaians respect the presidency with these kinds of corruptions and propaganda? Lies and a whole lot of things. And as Samoa Gabriel says, respect is reciprocal. Richie Sam Jr. is asking whether we have a president in Ghana. And Franklin Kweku Godsway says, I respect the presidency 100%. So those are your comments coming um, through on social media. We'll take a quick break. We'll be telling you about an issue that actually generated on social media after this. Welcome back to Joy News Interactive. Let's move on to an issue that generated on social media. Togolese footballer Emmanuel Debayo's woes. He's been giving us details about his brother, Rotimi. Uh, according to him, you know, he, he says he stole, his brother stole a number of things, including 21 phones when he took him to be part of a football club. A whole bunch of things. You can find it on his official Facebook page. According to Emmanuel Adebayo, this is all for us to learn from his experiences. He says the public should watch out for part three. His brother has, however, apologized, according to the BBC. But we want to find out what does one draw the line when it comes to sharing very personal issues on social media. And we have some of your comments. Uh, but before we take your comments, let's take the video blog. <laughs> Enough is enough. A long, it was a long time ago. Mm. Right now, he's been trying to help his family. I've read quite a lot about all the things he's posted on, on, on the uh, social websites already. The help he's trying to give his brother, his sisters, and all that. Mm. But they are still not showing appreciation. Even before he came out of his own foundation, he had to go through a whole lot. So personally, if I was in the shoes, I, I think I would, just, I would just cut my family off. Just making him do all this. But then I think he has his reason. But then for me, I think personally, someone has to speak to him for him to stop this. Because it's, it's family issue, and you don't have to wash your deadly name in public like that. But like I said again, I don't really know what's making him do all this. But for if you think he has a very good reason, he can still go on. But personally, I don't think it's enough. And for the third reason, for the third part he wants to show, I, 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 I don't think he can do worse than that. Because what he said, I think it's enough already. Yeah. I, can't, I can't really tell because I don't know the, the actual details about it. it. Seems like we it's like an inside thing. So both of them actually say what actually goes on. You can't actually take sides on this one because he says this goes on with his family and his sister goes like, no, it's not true. Now we the outsiders, we're just looking. We can't really tell who's actually saying the truth. To probably a third party comes in and from the same inside story to tell us that, yeah, this happened, this happened, or from an elderly or something. And on Facebook, Bakari Gideon says it's a sad moment for Adebayo, but I pray that things get better. Honestly, I would have wished he ignored all the accusations from his family by avoiding further revelations on social media. We all know how much he loves his family and the numerous good things he has done for every family member. God bless him and restore him to full joy. Romeo Gareth Edwards says, I think the family are a bunch of gold diggers and they want to destroy his career. After all that he's done for them, they have the nerve to reply back and Adebayo should ignore them. It's better that way and steve is back mm. steve welcome thank you let's take a look at the picture of the day quickly and it's a facebook group called one africa it looks <laughs> like it has some <laughs> of our african leaders and the president actually <laughs> buhari is saying where is mahama Ghanaians are complaining they don't have light Atara comes laughing. They call it Doomso. And John Mahama leaves the group. <laughs> He's added again. And he leaves the group again. And more on Doomso. The vigil can't stop the Doomso. That's from Kumbasi Muniru. That's one is coming from WhatsApp. 
and people are saying that celebrities should rather bring their ideas of how to solve the doomsaw situation. That's also coming in from Godwin on WhatsApp. That's all time will allow us for this edition of Joy News Interactive. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ifwakwa Harrison. And mine is Stephen Antti. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.